Lithuania listen, Lithuanian, Lietuva LTV, officially the Republic of Lithuania Lithuanian, Lietuvos Respublika, is a country in the Baltic region of Europe. Since its independence, Lithuania has been referred to as one of the Baltic states. It is situated along the southeastern shore of the Baltic Sea, to the east of Sweden and Denmark. It is bordered by Latvia to the north, Belarus to the east and south, Poland to the south, and Kaliningrad Oblast a Russian exclave to the southwest. Lithuania has an estimated population of 2.7 million people as of 2018, and its capital and largest city is Vilnius. Other major cities are Kaunas and Klaipeda. Lithuanians are Baltic people. The official language, Lithuanian, along with Latvian, is one of only two living languages in the Baltic branch of the Indo-European language family. For centuries, the southeastern shores of the Baltic Sea were inhabited by various Baltic tribes. In the 1230s, the Lithuanian lands were united by Mendogas, the King of Lithuania, and the first unified Lithuanian state, the Kingdom of Lithuania, was created on 6 July 1253. During the 14th century, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania was the largest country in Europe, present-day Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, and parts of Poland and Russia were the territories of the Grand Duchy. With the Lublin Union of 1569, Lithuania and Poland formed a voluntary two-state personal union, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Commonwealth lasted more than two centuries, until neighbouring countries systematically dismantled it from 1772 to 1795, with the Russian Empire annexing most of Lithuania's territory. As World War I neared its end, Lithuania's Act of Independence was signed on 16 February 1918, declaring the founding of the modern Republic of Lithuania. In the midst of the Second World War, Lithuania was first occupied by the Soviet Union and then by Nazi Germany. As World War II neared its end and the Germans retreated, the Soviet Union reoccupied Lithuania. On the 11th of March 1990, a year before the formal dissolution of the Soviet Union, Lithuania became the first Baltic state to declare itself independent, resulting in the restoration of an independent state of Lithuania. Lithuania is a member of the European Union, the Council of Europe, Eurozone, Schengen Agreement, NATO and OECD. It is also a member of the Nordic Investment Bank, and part of Nordic-Baltic cooperation of Northern European countries. The United Nations Human Development Index lists Lithuania as a very high human development country. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The first known record of the name of Lithuania Lithuanian, Lietuva, is in a 9 March 1009 story of St. Bruno in the Quedlinburg Chronicle. The chronicle recorded a Latinized form of the name Lietuva, Lituva, pronounced Lituva. Due to the lack of reliable evidence, the true meaning of the name is unknown. Nowadays, scholars still debate the meaning of the word and there are a few plausible versions. Since the word Lietuva has a suffix uva, the original word should have no suffix. A likely candidate is Lieta. Because many Baltic ethnonyms originated from hydronyms, linguists have searched for its origin among local hydronyms. Usually such names evolved through the following process, hydronym toponym ethnonym. Litava, a small river not far from Kurnave, the core area of the early Lithuanian state and a possible first capital of the eventual Grand Duchy of Lithuania, is usually credited as the source of the name. 
However, the river is very small and some find it improbable that such a small and local object could have lent its name to an entire nation. On the other hand, such a naming is not unprecedented in world history. Arturas de Bonasas proposed another hypothesis that Liatuva relates to the word Lysiae, plural of Lytus. From the middle of the 13th century, Lysiae were a distinct warrior social group of the Lithuanian society subordinate to the Lithuanian ruler or the state itself. The word Lysiae is used in the 14 to 16 th century historical sources as an ethnonym for Lithuanians, but not Samogitians, and is still used, usually poetically or in historical contexts, in the Latvian language, which is closely related to Lithuanian. Topic: History. Topic. Prehistory The first people settled in the territory of Lithuania after the last glacial period in the 10th millennium BC, Kunda, Neman and Narva cultures. They were travelling hunters and did not form stable settlements. In the 8th millennium BC, the climate became much warmer, and forests developed. The inhabitants of what is now Lithuania then travelled less and engaged in local hunting, gathering and fresh water fishing. Agriculture did not emerge until the 3rd millennium BC due to a harsh climate and terrain and a lack of suitable tools to cultivate the land. Crafts and trade also started to form at this time. Over a millennium, the Indo-Europeans, who arrived in the 3rd–2nd millennium BC, mixed with the local population and formed various Baltic tribes. The Baltic tribes did not maintain close cultural or political contacts with the Roman Empire, but they did maintain trade contacts see Amber Road. Tacitus, in his study Germania, described the SD people, inhabitants of the southeastern Baltic Sea shores who were probably Balts, around the year 97 AD. The Western Balts differentiated and became known to outside chroniclers first. Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD knew of the Galindians and Yatvingians, and early medieval chroniclers mentioned Old Prussians, Curonians, and Semigallians. The Lithuanian language is considered to be very conservative for its close connection to Indo European roots. It is believed to have differentiated from the Latvian language, the most closely related existing language, around the 7th century. Traditional Lithuanian pagan customs and mythology, with many archaic elements, were long preserved. Rulers' bodies were cremated up until the conversion to Christianity. The descriptions of the cremation ceremonies of the Grand Dukes Algirdas and Kestudas have survived. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Grand Duchy of Lithuania. From the 9th to the 11th centuries, coastal Balts were subjected to raids by the Vikings, and the kings of Denmark collected tribute at times. During the 10 to 11 th centuries, Lithuanian territories were among the lands paying tribute to Kievan Rus, and Yaroslav the Wise was among the Ruthenian rulers who invaded Lithuania from 1040. From the mid-12th century, it was the Lithuanians who were invading Ruthenian territories. In 1183, Polotsk and Pskov were ravaged, and even the distant and powerful Novgorod Republic was repeatedly threatened by the excursions from the emerging Lithuanian war machine toward the end of the 12th century. From the late 12th century, an organized Lithuanian military force existed, it was used for external raids, plundering, and the gathering of slaves. Such military and pecuniary activities fostered social differentiation and triggered a struggle for power in Lithuania. 
This initiated the formation of early statehood, from which the Grand Duchy of Lithuania developed. Initially inhabited by fragmented Baltic tribes, in the 1230s the Lithuanian lands were united by Mendogus, who was crowned as King of Lithuania on 6 July 1253. After his assassination in 1263, pagan Lithuania was a target of the Christian Crusades of the Teutonic Knights and the Livonian Order. Siege of Pylonai is noted for the Lithuanians' heroic defence against the intruders. Despite the devastating century-long struggle with the orders, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania expanded rapidly, overtaking former Slavic principalities of Kievan Rus. On the 22nd of September 1236, the Battle of Saul between Samogitians and the Livonian Brothers of the Sword took place close to Sholay. The Livonian Brothers were smashed during it and their further conquest of the Balts lands were stopped. The battle inspired rebellions among the Curonians, Semigallians, Salonians, Oizelians, tribes previously conquered by the Sword Brothers. Some thirty years' worth of conquests on the left bank of Dagava were lost. In 2000, the Lithuanian and Latvian parliaments declared the 22nd of September to be the day of Baltic unity. According to the legend, Grand Duke Gediminas was once hunting near the Vilnia River. Tired after the successful hunt, he settled in for the night and dreamed of a huge iron wolf standing on top a hill and howling as strong and loud as a hundred wolves. Krivis pagan priest Lizdeka interpreted the dream that the Iron Wolf represents Vilnius castles. Gediminas, obeying the will of gods, built the city, and gave it the name Vilnius, from the stream of the Vilnia River. In 1362 or 1363, Grand Duke Algirdas achieved a decisive victory in the Battle of Blue Waters against Golden Horde and stopped its further expansion in the present day Ukraine. The victory brought the city of Kiev and a large part of present-day Ukraine, including sparsely populated Podolia and Dykra, under the control of the expanding Grand Duchy of Lithuania. After taking Kiev, Lithuania became a direct neighbor and rival of the Grand Duchy of Moscow. By the end of the 14th century, Lithuania was one of the largest countries in Europe and included present day Belarus, Ukraine, and parts of Poland and Russia. The geopolitical situation between the West and the East determined the multicultural and multi confessional character of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The ruling elite practiced religious tolerance and Chancery Slavonic language was used as an auxiliary language to the Latin for official documents. In 1385, the Grand Duke Jogaila accepted Poland's offer to become its king. Jogaila embarked on gradual Christianization of Lithuania and established a personal union between Poland and Lithuania. Lithuania was one of the last pagan areas of Europe to adopt Christianity. After two civil wars, Vytautas the Great became the Grand Duke of Lithuania in 1392. During his reign, Lithuania reached the peak of its territorial expansion, centralization of the state began, and the Lithuanian nobility became increasingly prominent in state politics. In the Great Battle of the Vorskla River in 1399, the combined forces of Tokhtemish and Vytautas were defeated by the Mongols. Thanks to close cooperation, the armies of Lithuania and Poland achieved a great victory over the Teutonic Knights in 1410 at the Battle of Grunwald, one of the largest battles of medieval Europe. In January 1429, at the Congress of Lutsik, Vytautas received the title of King of Lithuania with the backing of Sigismund, Holy Roman Emperor, but the envoys who were transporting the crown were stopped by Polish magnates in autumn of 1430. Another crown was sent, but Vytautas died in the Trakai island castle several days before it reached Lithuania. 
He was buried in the Cathedral of Vilnius. After the deaths of Jogaila and Vytautas, the Lithuanian nobility attempted to break the union between Poland and Lithuania, independently selecting Grand Dukes from the Jagiellon dynasty. But, at the end of the 15th century, Lithuania was forced to seek a closer alliance with Poland when the growing power of the Grand Duchy of Moscow threatened Lithuania's Russian principalities and sparked the Muscovite-Lithuanian Wars and the Livonian War. On 8 September 1514, Battle of Orsha between Lithuanians, commanded by the Grand Hetman Konstanty Ostrogsky, and Muscovites was fought. According to Rerum Moscoviticarum commentary by Sigismund von Herberstein, the primary source for information on the battle, the much smaller army of Poland-Lithuania under 30,000 men defeated a force of 80,000 Muscovite soldiers, capturing their camp and commander. The battle destroyed a military alliance against Lithuania and Poland. Thousands of Muscovites were captured as prisoners and used as laborers in the Lithuanian manors, while Konstanty Ostrogsky delivered the captured Muscovite flags to the Cathedral of Vilnius. The Livonian War was ceased for ten years with a truce of Yam Zapolsky signed on 15 January 1582, according to which the already Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth recovered Livonia, Polotsk, and Valizh, but transferred Velikia. Luki to the Tsardom of Russia. The truce was extended for 20 years in 1600, when a diplomatic mission to Moscow led by Lu Sapieha concluded negotiations with Tsar Boris Godunov. The truce was broken when the Poles invaded Muscovy in 1605. Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was created in 1569 by the Union of Lublin. As a member of the Commonwealth, Lithuania retained its institutions, including a separate army, currency, and statutory laws, the Statute of Lithuania. Eventually Polonization affected all aspects of Lithuanian life, politics, language, culture, and national identity. From the mid-16th to the mid-17th centuries, culture, arts, and education flourished, fueled by the Renaissance and the Protestant Reformation. From 1573, the kings of Poland and Grand Dukes of Lithuania were elected by the nobility, who were granted ever-increasing golden liberties. These liberties, especially the liberum veto, led to anarchy and the eventual dissolution of the state. The Commonwealth reached its golden age in the early 17th century. Its powerful parliament was dominated by nobles who were reluctant to get involved in the Thirty Years' War. This neutrality spared the country from the ravages of a political religious conflict that devastated most of contemporary Europe. The Commonwealth held its own against Sweden, the Tsardom of Russia, and vassals of the Ottoman Empire, and even launched successful expansionist offensives against its neighbours. In several invasions during the Time of Troubles, Commonwealth troops entered Russia and managed to take Moscow and hold it from 27 September 1610 to 4 November 1612, when they were driven out after a siege. In 1655, after the extinguishing battle, for the first time in history Lithuanian capital Vilnius was taken by the foreign army. Russian army looted the city, splendid churches, manors. 8,000 citizens were killed, the city burned 17 days. Those who returned after the catastrophe didn't recognize the city. Russian occupation of Grand Duchy of Lithuania lasted up to 1661. Many artifacts and cultural heritage were either lost or looted. Significant parts of the state archive, Lithuanian metrica, collected since 13th century, were lost and the rest is moved out of the country. 
During the Northern Wars 1655 the Lithuanian territory and economy were devastated by the Swedish army. Almost all territory of Grand Duchy of Lithuania was occupied by Swedish and Russian armies. This period is known as T. Vanas the Deluge. Before it could fully recover, Lithuania was ravaged during the Great Northern War 1700 The war, a plague, and a famine caused the deaths of approximately 40% of the country's population. Foreign powers, especially Russia, became dominant in the domestic politics of the Commonwealth. Numerous fractions among the nobility used the Golden Liberties to prevent any reforms. The Constitution of 3 May 1791 was adopted by the Great Sejm Parliament of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth trying to save the state. The legislation was designed to redress the Commonwealth's political defects due to the system of Golden Liberties, also known as the Nobles' Democracy had conferred disproportionate rights on the nobility and over time had corrupted politics. The constitution sought to supplant the prevailing anarchy fostered by some of the country's magnates with a more democratic constitutional monarchy. It introduced elements of political equality between townspeople and nobility, and placed the peasants under the protection of the government, thus mitigating the worst abuses of serfdom. It banned parliamentary institutions such as the liberum veto, which had put the same at the mercy of any deputy who could revoke all the legislation that had been passed by that same. It was drafted in relation to a copy of the United States Constitution. Others have called it the world's second oldest codified national governmental constitution after the 1787 U.S. Constitution. <laughs> Russian Empire Eventually, the Commonwealth was partitioned in 1772, 1792, and 1795 by the Russian Empire, Prussia, and Habsburg Austria. The largest area of Lithuanian territory became part of the Russian Empire. After unsuccessful uprisings in 1831 and 1863, the Tsarist authorities implemented a number of Russification policies. In 1840 the Third Statute of Lithuania was abolished. They banned the Lithuanian press, closed cultural and educational institutions, and made Lithuania part of a new administrative region called Northwestern Krai. The Russification failed owing to an extensive network of book smugglers and secret Lithuanian homeschooling. After the Russo-Turkish War 1877 when German diplomats assigned what were seen as Russian spoils of war to Turkey, the relationship between Russia and the German Empire became complicated. The Russian Empire resumed the construction of fortresses at its western borders for defense against a potential invasion from Germany in the west. On 7 July 1879 the Russian Emperor Alexander II approved of a proposal from the Russian military leadership to build the largest, first class defensive structure in the entire state the 65 square kilometers 25 square miles Kana's fortress large numbers of lithuanians went to the united states in 1867 to 1868 after a famine simonis daukantas promoted a return to lithuania's pre-commonwealth traditions which he depicted as a golden age of lithuania and a renewal of the native culture based on the Lithuanian language and customs. With those ideas in mind, he wrote already in 1822 a history of Lithuania in Lithuanian, Darbai Senuju Lietuviu ir Zamaichu The Deeds of Ancient Lithuanians and Samogitians, though still not yet published at that time. 
A colleague of S. Dalkantas, Teodor Narbit wrote in Polish a voluminous ancient history of the Lithuanian nation 1835 where he likewise expounded and expanded further on the concept of historic Lithuania, whose days of glory had ended with the Union of Lublin in 1569. Narbet, invoking the German scholarship, pointed out the relationship between the Lithuanian and Sanskrit languages. A Lithuanian national revival, inspired by the ancient Lithuanian history, language and culture, laid the foundations of the modern Lithuanian nation and independent Lithuania. Topic 20th and 21st centuries Topic 1918 to 1939 As a result of the Great Retreat during World War I, Germany occupied the entire territory of Lithuania and Courland by the end of 1915. A new administrative entity, Ober Ost, was established. Lithuanians lost all political rights they had gained, personal freedom was restricted, and at the beginning the Lithuanian press was banned. However, the Lithuanian intelligentsia tried to take advantage of the existing geopolitical situation and began to look for opportunities to restore Lithuania's independence. On 18–22 September 1917, the Vilnius Conference elected the 20-member Council of Lithuania. The Council adopted the Act of Independence of Lithuania on 16 February 1918 which proclaimed the restoration of the independent state of Lithuania governed by democratic principles, with Vilnius as its capital. The state of Lithuania which had been built within the framework of the Act, lasted from 1918 until 1940. Following the capitulation of Germany in November 1918, the first provisional constitution of Lithuania was adopted and the first government of Prime Minister Augustinas Voldemaras was organized. At the same time, the army and other state institutions began to be organized. Lithuania fought three wars of independence, against the Bolsheviks who proclaimed the Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic, against the Bermontians, and against Poland. As a result of the staged Zeligowski's mutiny in October 1920, Poland took control of Vilnius region and annexed it as Wilno Voivodeship in 1922. Lithuania continued to claim Vilnius as its de jure capital and relations with Poland remained particularly tense and hostile for the entire interwar period. In January 1923, Lithuania staged the Klaipeda Revolt and captured Klaipeda region Memel territory, which was detached from East Prussia by the Treaty of Versailles. The region became an autonomous region of Lithuania. On 15 May 1920, the first meeting of the democratically elected Constituent Assembly took place. The documents it adopted, i.e. the temporary 1920 and permanent 1922 constitutions of Lithuania, strove to regulate the life of the new state. Land, finance, and educational reforms started to be implemented. The currency of Lithuania, the Lithuanian Lidas, was introduced. The University of Lithuania was opened. All major public institutions had been established. As Lithuania began to gain stability, foreign countries started to recognize it. In 1921, Lithuania was admitted to the League of Nations. On the 17th of December 1926, a military coup d'état took place, resulting in the replacement of the democratically elected government with a conservative authoritarian government led by Antanas Smetona. Augustinas Voldemaras was appointed to form a government. The so-called authoritarian phase had begun strengthening the influence of one party, the Lithuanian Nationalist Union, in the country. 
In 1927, the Simas was released. A new constitution adopted in 1928, which consolidated presidential powers. Gradually the opposition parties were banned, the censorship was tightened, and the rights of national minorities were narrowed. On 15 July 1933, Stepona's Darius and Stasis Garenas, Lithuanian pilots, emigrants to the United States, made a significant flight in the history of world aviation. They flew across the Atlantic Ocean, covering a distance of 3,984 miles km without landing, in 37 hours and 11 minutes .1 miles per hour. In terms of comparison, as far as the distance of non-stop flights was concerned, their result ranked second only to that of Russell Boardman and John Palando. The temporary capital Cannes, which was nicknamed the Little Paris, and the country itself had a Western standard of living with sufficiently high salaries and low prices. At the time, qualified workers there were earning very similar real wages as workers in Germany, Italy, Switzerland and France. The country also had a surprisingly high natural increase in population of 9.7 and the industrial production of Lithuania increased by 160% from 1913 to 1940. The situation was aggravated by the global economic crisis. The purchase price of agricultural products had declined significantly. In 1935, farmers began strikes in Suvalkia and Zukaya. In addition to economic ones, political demands were made. The government cruelly suppressed the unrest. In the spring of 1936, four peasants were sentenced to death for starting the riots. Topic: 1939 to 1944. On the 20th of March 1939, after years of rising tensions, Lithuania was handed an ultimatum by Nazi Germany demanding to relinquish the Klaipeda region. Two days later, the Lithuanian government accepted the ultimatum. When Nazi Germany and Soviet Union concluded the Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact, Lithuania was initially assigned to the German sphere of influence but later was transferred to the Soviet sphere. At the outbreak of World War II, Lithuania declared neutrality. In October 1939, Lithuania was forced to sign the Soviet-Lithuanian Mutual Assistance Treaty. Five Soviet military bases with 20,000 troops were established in Lithuania in exchange for Vilnius that the Soviets captured from Poland. Delayed by the Winter War with Finland, the Soviets issued an ultimatum to Lithuania on the 14th of June 1940. They demanded to replace the Lithuanian government and to allow Red Army into the country. The government decided that with Soviet bases already in Lithuania armed resistance was impossible and accepted the ultimatum. President Smetona fled the country while more than 200,000 Soviet Red Army soldiers crossed the Belarus-Lithuania border. The next day, identical ultimatums were presented to Latvia and Estonia. The Baltic states were occupied. The Soviets followed semi-constitutional procedures for transforming the independent countries into Soviet republics and incorporating them into the Soviet Union. Vladimir Dekanazov was sent to supervise the formation of the puppet People's Government and the rigged election to the People's Simas. The Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic was proclaimed on 21 July and accepted into the Soviet Union on 3 August. Lithuania was rapidly Sovietized. Political parties and various organizations, except the Communist Party of Lithuania, were outlawed. Some 12,000 people, including many prominent figures, were arrested and imprisoned in gulag as enemies of the people. 
Larger private property was nationalized, Lithuanian litas was exchanged to Soviet ruble, farm taxes were increased by 50–200%, Lithuanian army was transformed into the 29th Rifle Corps of the Red Army. On 14–18 June 1941, less than a week before the Nazi invasion, some 17,000 Lithuanians were deported to Siberia, where many perished due to inhumane living conditions see the June deportation. The occupation was not recognized by Western powers and the Lithuanian diplomatic service, based on pre-war consulates and legations, continued to represent independent Lithuania until 1990. When Nazi Germany attacked the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1941, Lithuanians began the anti-Soviet June uprising, organized by the Lithuanian Activist Front. Lithuanians proclaimed independence and organized the Provisional Government of Lithuania. This government quickly self-disbanded. Lithuania became part of the Reichskommissariat Ostland, German civil administration. By 1 December 1941, over 120,000 Lithuanian Jews, or 91–95% of Lithuania's pre-war Jewish community, had been killed. Nearly 100,000 Jews, Poles, Russians and Lithuanians were murdered at Panarii. Approximately 13,000 men served in the Lithuanian Auxiliary Police Battalions. Ten of the 26 Lithuanian Auxiliary Police Battalions working with the Nazi Einsatzkommando, were involved in the mass killings. Rogue units organized by Algirdas Klimitis and supervised by SS Brigadefuhrer Walter Stalicker started Kana's pogrom in and around Kana's on 25 June 1941. In 1941, the Lithuanian Security Police Lietuvos Sagumo Policija, subordinate to Nazi Germany's Security Police and Nazi Germany's Criminal Police, was created. The Lietuvos Sagumo Policija targeted the communist underground. However, thousands of Lithuanian families risking their lives also protected Jews from the Holocaust. Israel has recognized 893 Lithuanians as of the 1st of January 2018 as righteous among the nations for risking their lives to save Jews during the Holocaust. A new occupation had begun. Nationalized assets were not returned to the residents. Some of them were forced to fight for Nazi Germany or were taken to German territories as a forced laborers. Jewish people were herded into ghettos and gradually killed by shooting or sending them out to concentration camps. Topic: 1944 to 1990. After the retreat of the German armed forces, the Soviets re-established their control of Lithuania in July–October 1944. The massive deportations to Siberia were resumed and lasted until the death of Stalin in 1953. All Lithuanian national symbols were banned. Under the pretext of Lithuania's economic recovery, the Moscow authorities encouraged the migration of workers and other specialists to Lithuania with the intention to further integrate Lithuania into the Soviet Union and to develop the country's industry. At the same time, Lithuanians were lured to work in the USSR by promising them all the privileges of settling in a new place. The second Soviet occupation was accompanied by the guerrilla warfare of the Lithuanian population, which took place in 1944–1953. It sought to restore an independent state of Lithuania, to consolidate democracy by destroying communism in the country, returning national values and the freedom of religion. Classified as bandits by the Soviets, Lithuanians took to the forests and fought them with a gun in their hands. 
In the later stages of the Partisan War, Lithuanians formed the Union of Lithuanian Freedom Fighters and its leader Jonas Zamatis codename Vytautas, was posthumously recognized as the President of Lithuania. The number of people in a group fell to three to five people. Despite the fact that the guerrilla warfare did not achieve its goal of liberating Lithuania and that it resulted in more than 20,000 deaths, the armed resistance de facto demonstrated that Lithuania did not voluntarily join the USSR and it also legitimized the will of the people of Lithuania to be independent. Even with the suppression of partisan resistance, the Soviet government failed to stop the movement for the independence of Lithuania. The underground dissident groups were active publishing the underground press and Catholic literature. The most active participants of the movement included Vincentas Sladkevičius, Sagitas Tamkevičius and Najol Sadanaitė. In 1972, after Roma's Kalanta's public self-immolation, the unrest in Kanas lasted for several days. The Helsinki Group, which was founded in Lithuania after the International Conference in Helsinki Finland, where the post-World War II borders were acknowledged, announced a declaration for Lithuania's independence on foreign radio station. The Helsinki Group informed the Western world about the situation in the Soviet Lithuania and violations of human rights. With the beginning of the increased openness and transparency in government institutions and activities Glasnost in the Soviet Union, on 3 June 1988, the Sajudis was established in Lithuania. Very soon it began to seek countries' independence. Vytautas Landsbergis became movement's leader. The supporters of Sajudis joined movement's groups all over Lithuania. On 23 August 1988 a big rally took place at the Vingus Park in Vilnius. It was attended by approximately 250,000 people. A year later, on 23 August 1989 celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact and aiming to draw the attention of the whole world to the occupation of the Baltic states, a political demonstration, the Baltic Way, was organized. The event, led by Sajudis, was a human chain spanning about 600 kilometers (370 miles) across the three Baltic capitals. Vilnius, Riga and Tallinn. The peaceful demonstration showed the desire of the people of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia to break away from the USSR. Topic 1990 present. On the 11th of March 1990, the Supreme Council announced the restoration of Lithuania's independence. Lithuania became the first Soviet-occupied state to announce restitution of independence. On the 20th of April 1990, the USSR imposed an economic blockade by stopping to deliver supplies of raw materials, primarily oil, to Lithuania. Not only the domestic industry, but also the population started feeling the lack of fuel, essential goods, and even hot water. Although the blockade lasted for 74 days, Lithuania did not renounce the Declaration of Independence. Gradually, the economic relations had been restored. However, the tension had peaked again in January 1991. At that time, attempts were made to carry out a coup using the Soviet Armed Forces, the Internal Army of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the USSR Committee for State Security KGB. Because of the bad economic situation in Lithuania, the forces in Moscow thought the coup d'état would receive a strong public support. But the situation was the opposite, people from all over Lithuania flooded to Vilnius to defend their legitimately elected Supreme Council of the Republic of Lithuania and Independence. 
The coup ended with a few casualties of peaceful civilians and caused huge material loss. Not a single person who defended Lithuanian parliament or other state institutions used a weapon, but the Soviet army did. Soviet soldiers killed 14 people and injured hundreds. A large part of the Lithuanian population participated in the January events. Shortly after, on the 11th of February 1991, the Icelandic parliament voted to confirm that Iceland's 1922 recognition of Lithuanian independence was still in full effect, as it never formally recognized the Soviet Union's control over Lithuania, and that full diplomatic relations should be established as soon as possible. On the 31st of July 1991, Soviet paramilitaries killed seven Lithuanian border guards on the Belarusian border in what became known as the Medininkai massacre. On 17 September 1991, Lithuania was admitted to the United Nations. On 25 October 1992, the citizens of Lithuania voted in the referendum to adopt the current constitution. On 14 February 1993, during the direct general elections, Algirdas Brazauskas became the first president after the restoration of independence of Lithuania. On 31 August 1993, the last units of the Soviet army left the territory of Lithuania. Since 29 March 2004, Lithuania has been part of the NATO. On 1 May 2004, it became a full-fledged member of the European Union, and a member of the Schengen Agreement on 21 December 2007. Geography Lithuania is located in the Baltic region of Europe Note and covers an area of 65,200 square kilometers, 25,200 square miles. It lies between latitudes 53 degrees and 57 degrees north and mostly between longitudes 21 degrees and 27 degrees east. Part of the Curonian Spit lies west of 21 degrees. It has around 99 kilometers, 61.5 miles of sandy coastline, only about 38 kilometers, 24 miles of which face the open Baltic Sea, less than the other two Baltic Sea countries. The rest of the coast is sheltered by the Curonian Sand Peninsula. Lithuania's major warm water port, Klaipeda, lies at the narrow mouth of the Curonian Lagoon Lithuanian, Kershu Marios, a shallow lagoon extending south to Kaliningrad. The country's main and largest river, the Namunas River, and some of its tributaries carry international shipping. Lithuania lies at the edge of the North European Plain. Its landscape was smoothed by the glaciers of the last ice age, and is a combination of moderate lowlands and highlands. Its highest point is Oxtoyas Hill at 294 metres 965 feet in the eastern part of the country. The terrain features numerous lakes Lake Vistitis, for example, and wetlands, and a mixed forest zone covers over 33% of the country. Druxiai is the largest, Tauranyas is the deepest and Asveja is the longest lake in Lithuania. After a re-estimation of the boundaries of the continent of Europe in 1989, Jean-Georges Affholder, a scientist at the Institut Géographique National French National Geographic Institute, determined that the geographic centre of Europe was in Lithuania, at 54 degrees 54 and 25 degrees 19 e, 26 kilometers 16 miles north of Lithuania's capital city of Vilnius. Affholder accomplished this by calculating the center of gravity of the geometrical figure of Europe. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Climate. 
Lithuania's climate, which ranges between maritime and continental, is relatively mild. Average temperatures on the coast are minus 2.5 degrees Celsius (27.5 degrees Fahrenheit) in January and 16 degrees Celsius (61 degrees Fahrenheit) in July. In Vilnius, the average temperatures are minus 6 degrees Celsius (21 degrees Fahrenheit) in January and 17 degrees Celsius (63 degrees Fahrenheit) in July. During the summer, 20 degrees Celsius (68 degrees Fahrenheit) is common during the day, while 14 degrees Celsius (57 degrees Fahrenheit) is common at night. In the past, temperatures have reached as high as 30 or 35 degrees Celsius (86 or 95 degrees Fahrenheit). Some winters can be very cold. Minus 20 degrees Celsius minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit occurs almost every winter. Winter extremes are minus 34 degrees Celsius minus 29 degrees Fahrenheit in coastal areas and minus 43 degrees Celsius minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit in the east of Lithuania. The average annual precipitation is 800 mm (31.5 in) on the coast, 900 mm (35.4 in) in the Samogitia Highlands, and 600 mm (23.6 in) in the eastern part of the country. Snow occurs every year. It can snow from October to April. In some years, sleet can fall in September or May. The growing season lasts 202 days in the western part of the country and 169 days in the eastern part. Severe storms are rare in the eastern part of Lithuania but common in the coastal areas. The longest records of measured temperature in the Baltic area cover about 250 years. The data show warm periods during the latter half of the 18th century, and that the 19th century was a relatively cool period. An early 20th century warming culminated in the 1930s, followed by a smaller cooling that lasted until the 1960s. A warming trend has persisted since then. Lithuania experienced a drought in 2002, causing forest and peat bog fires. The country suffered along with the rest of northwestern Europe during a heat wave in the summer of 2006. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Environment. After the restoration of Lithuania's independence in 1990, the Aplinkos Apsugos Istatimas Environmental Protection Act was adopted already in 1992. The law provided the foundations for regulating social relations in the field of environmental protection, established the basic rights and obligations of legal and natural persons in preserving the biodiversity inherent in Lithuania, ecological systems and the landscape. Lithuania agreed to cut carbon emissions by at least 20% of 1990 levels by the year 2020 and by at least 40% by the year 2030, together with all European Union members. Also, by 2020 at least 20% 20 by 2030 of countries' total energy consumption should be from the renewable energy sources. In 2016, Lithuania introduced especially effective container deposit legislation, which resulted in collecting 92% of all packagings in 2017. Lithuania does not have high mountains and its landscape is dominated by blooming meadows, dense forests, and fertile fields of cereals. However it stands out by the abundance of hillforts, which previously had castles where the ancient Lithuanians burned altars for pagan gods. Lithuania is a particularly watered region with more than 3,000 lakes, mostly in northeastern Lithuania. 
Many rivers are also flowing in Lithuania, most notably the longest Namunas. Forest has long been one of the most important natural resources in Lithuania. Forests occupy one third of the country's territory, and timber related industrial production accounts for almost 11% industrial production in the country. Lithuania has five national parks, 30 regional parks, 402 nature reserves, 668 state protected natural heritage objects. Lithuania is ranked fifth, second to Sweden, first three places are not granted in Climate Change Performance Index. CCPI. <inaudible> Biodiversity Lithuanian ecosystems include natural and semi-natural forests, bogs, wetlands, meadows, and anthropogenic agrarian and urban ecosystems. Among natural ecosystems, forests are particularly important to Lithuania, covering 33% of the country's territory. Wetlands, raised bogs, fens, transitional mires, etc., cover 7.9% of the country, with 70% of wetlands having been lost due to drainage and peat extraction between 1960 and 1980. Changes in wetland plant communities resulted in the replacement of moss and grass communities by trees and shrubs, and fens not directly affected by land reclamation have become drier as a result of a drop in the water table. There are 29,000 rivers with a total length of 64,000 km in Lithuania, the Namunas River basin occupying 74% of the territory of the country. Due to the construction of dams, approximately 70% of spawning sites of potential catadromous fish species have disappeared. In some cases, river and lake ecosystems continue to be impacted by anthropogenic eutrophication. Agricultural land comprises 54% of Lithuania's territory, roughly 70% of that is arable land and 30% meadows and pastures. Approximately 400,000 hectares of agricultural land is not farmed, and acts as an ecological niche for weeds and invasive plant species. Habitat deterioration is occurring in regions with very productive and expensive lands as crop areas are expanded. Currently, 18.9% of all plant species, including 1.87% of all known fungi species and 31% of all known species of lichens, are listed in the Lithuanian Red Data Book. The list also contains 8% of all fish species. The wildlife populations have rebounded as the hunting became more restricted and urbanization allowed replanting forests. Forests already tripled in size since their lows. Currently, Lithuania has approximately 250,000 larger wild animals or 5 per each square kilometer. The most prolific large wild animal in every part of Lithuania is the roe deer, with 120,000 of them. They are followed by boars 55,000. Other ungulates are the deer approximately 22,000, fallow deer approximately 21,000 and the largest one, moose approximately 7,000. Among the Lithuanian predators, foxes are the most common, approximately 27,000. Wolves are, however, more ingrained into the mythology as there are just 800 in Lithuania. Even rarer are the lynxes, approximately 200. The large animals mentioned above exclude the rabbit, approximately 200,000 of which may live in the Lithuanian forests. Politics Government Since Lithuania declared the restoration of its independence on the 11th of March 1990, it has maintained strong democratic traditions. 
It held its first independent general elections on 25 October 1992, in which 56.75% of voters supported the new constitution. There were intense debates concerning the constitution, particularly the role of the president. A separate referendum was held on 23 May 1992 to gauge public opinion on the matter, and 41% of voters supported the restoration of the President of Lithuania. Through compromise, a semi-presidential system was agreed on. The Lithuanian head of state is the president, directly elected for a five-year term and serving a maximum of two terms. The president oversees foreign affairs and national security, and is the commander-in-chief of the military. The president also appoints the prime minister and, on the latter's nomination, the rest of the cabinet, as well as a number of other top civil servants and the judges for all courts. The current Lithuanian head of state, Dalia Griboskaite was elected on 17 May 2009, becoming the first female president in the country's history, and the second female head of state in the Baltic states after Latvia elected their first female political leader in 1999. Dalia Griboskaite was re-elected for a second term in 2014. The judges of the Constitutional Court serve nine-year terms. They are appointed by the President, the Chairman of the Seimas, and the Chairman of the Supreme Court, each of whom appoint three judges. The unicameral Lithuanian Parliament, the Seimas, has 141 members who are elected to four-year terms. Seventy-one of the members of its members are elected in single-member constituencies, and the others in a nationwide vote by proportional representation. A party must receive at least 5% of the national vote to be eligible for any of the 70 national seats in the SEMAs. <laughs> Political parties and elections Lithuania exhibits a fragmented multi-party system, with a number of small parties in which coalition governments are common. Ordinary elections to the SEMAs take place on the second Sunday of October every four years. To be eligible for election, candidates must be at least 25 years old on the election day, not under allegiance to a foreign state and permanently reside in Lithuania. Persons serving or due to serve a sentence imposed by the court 65 days before the election are not eligible. Also, judges, citizens performing military service, and servicemen of professional military service and officials of statutory institutions and establishments may not stand for election. Lithuanian Peasant and Greens Union won the Lithuanian parliamentary election in 2016 and gained 54 of 141 seats in the parliament. The President of Lithuania is the head of state of the country, elected to a five-year term in a majority vote. Elections take place on the last Sunday no more than two months before the end of current presidential term. To be eligible for election, candidates must be at least 40 years old on the election day and reside in Lithuania for at least three years, in addition to satisfying the eligibility criteria for a member of the parliament. Same president may serve for not more than two terms. Dalia Griboskaite has won two recent consecutive elections as an independent candidate. Each municipality in Lithuania is governed by a municipal council and a mayor, who is a member of the municipal council. The number of members, elected on a four year term, in each municipal council depends on the size of the municipality and varies from 15 in municipalities with fewer than 5,000 residents to 51 in municipalities with more than 500,000 residents. 1,524 municipal council members were elected in 2015. 
Members of the council, with the exception of the mayor, are elected using proportional representation. Starting with 2015, the mayor is elected directly by the majority of residents of the municipality. Social Democratic Party of Lithuania won most of the positions in the 2015 elections 372 municipal councils seats and 16 mayors. As of 2014, the number of seats in the European Parliament allocated to Lithuania was 11. Ordinary elections take place on a Sunday on the same day as in other EU countries. The vote is open to all citizens of Lithuania, as well as citizens of other EU countries that permanently reside in Lithuania, who are at least 18 years old on the election day. To be eligible for election, candidates must be at least 21 years old on the election day, citizen of Lithuania or citizen of another EU country permanently residing in Lithuania. Candidates are not allowed to stand for election in more than one country. Persons serving or due to serve a sentence imposed by the court 65 days before the election are not eligible. Also, judges, citizens performing military service, and servicemen of professional military service and officials of statutory institutions and establishments may not stand for election. Seven political parties' representatives gained seats in the 2014 elections. Topic: <laughs> Law and law enforcement. After regaining of independence in 1990, the largely modified Soviet legal codes were in force for about a decade. The current constitution of Lithuania was adopted on 25 October 1992. In 2001, the Civil Code of Lithuania was passed in Simas. It was succeeded by the Criminal Code and Criminal Procedure Code in 2003. The approach to the criminal law is inquisitorial, as opposed to adversarial, it is generally characterized by an insistence on formality and rationalization, as opposed to practicality and informality. Normative Legal Act enters into force on the next day after its publication in the TISA's Octa Registras, unless it has a later entry into force date. The European Union law is an integral part of the Lithuanian legal system since 1 May 2004. Lithuania, after breaking away from the Soviet Union, had a difficult crime situation, however, the Lithuanian law enforcement agencies eliminated many criminals over the years, making Lithuania a reasonably safe country. Crime in Lithuania has been declining rapidly. Law enforcement in Lithuania is primarily the responsibility of local Lietuvos policija Lithuanian police commissariats. They are supplemented by the Lietuvos Policijos Antiterroristiniu Operaciju Rinktine Aras Anti-Terrorist Operations Team of the Lithuanian Police Aras, Lietuvos Criminalines Policijos Bureaus Lithuanian Criminal Police Bureau, Lietuvos Policijos Criminalistiniu Tyrimu Centras Lithuanian Police Forensic Research Center and Lietuvos Kaliu Policijos Tarniba Lithuanian Road Police Police service. In 2017, there were 63,846 crimes registered in Lithuania. Of these, thefts comprised a large part with 19,630 cases, 13.2% less than in 2016. While 2,835 crimes were very hard and hard crimes that may result in more than six years imprisonment, which is 14.5% less than in 2016. Totally, 129 homicides or attempted homicide occurred 19.9% less than in 2016, while serious bodily harm was registered 178 times 17.6% less than in 2016. 
Another problematic crime contraband cases also decreased by 27.2% from 2016 numbers. Meanwhile, crimes in electronic data and information technology security fields noticeably increased by 26.6%. In the 2013 special Eurobarometer, 29% of Lithuanians said that corruption affects their daily lives EU average 26%. Moreover, 95% of Lithuanians regarded corruption as widespread in their country EU average 76%, and 88% agreed that bribery and the use of connections is often the easiest way of obtaining certain public services EU average 73%. Though, according to local branch of Transparency International, corruption levels have been decreasing over the past decade, capital punishment in Lithuania was suspended in 1996 and fully eliminated in 1998. Lithuania has the highest number of prison inmates in the EU. According to scientist Gintautas Sokolauskas, this is not because of a high criminality rate in the country, but due to Lithuania's high repression level and the lack of trust of the convicted, who are frequently sentenced to a jail imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative divisions The current system of administrative division was established in 1994 and modified in 2000 to meet the requirements of the European Union. The country's ten counties Lithuanian, singular, apskritis, plural, apskrities are subdivided into 60 municipalities Lithuanian, singular, savivaldybi, plural, savivaldybis, and further divided into 500 elderships Lithuanian, singular, senionia, plural, senionihos. Municipalities have been the most important unit of administration in Lithuania since the system of county governorship was dissolved in 2010. Some municipalities are historically called district municipalities, often shortened to district, while others are called city municipalities, sometimes shortened to city. Each has its own elected government. The election of municipality councils originally occurred every three years, but now takes place every four years. The council appoints elders to govern the elderships. Mayors have been directly elected since 2015. Prior to that, they were appointed by the council. Elderships, numbering over 500, are the smallest administrative units and do not play a role in national politics. They provide necessary local public services for example, registering births and deaths in rural areas. They are most active in the social sector, identifying needy individuals or families and organizing and distributing welfare and other forms of relief. Some citizens feel that elderships have no real power and receive too little attention, and that they could otherwise become a source of local initiative for addressing rural problems. Foreign relations Lithuania became a member of the United Nations on 18 September 1991, and is a signatory to a number of its organizations and other international agreements. It is also a member of the European Union, the Council of Europe, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, as well as NATO and its adjunct North Atlantic Coordinating Council. Lithuania gained membership in the World Trade Organization on 31 May 2001, and joined the OECD on 5 July 2018, while also seeking membership in other Western organizations. Lithuania has established diplomatic relations with 149 countries. In 2011, Lithuania hosted the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe Ministerial Council meeting. 
During the second half of 2013, Lithuania assumed the role of the Presidency of the European Union. Lithuania is also active in developing cooperation among Northern European countries. It has been a member of the Baltic Council since its establishment in 1993. The Baltic Council, located in Tallinn, is a permanent organization of international cooperation that operates through the Baltic Assembly and the Baltic Council of Ministers. Lithuania also cooperates with Nordic and the two other Baltic countries through the NB8 format. A similar format, NB6, unites Nordic and Baltic members of EU. NB6 a focus is to discuss and agree on positions before presenting them to the Council of the European Union and at the meetings of EU foreign affairs ministers. The Council of the Baltic Sea States CBSS was established in Copenhagen in 1992 as an informal regional political forum. Its main aim is to promote integration and to close contacts between the region's countries. The members of CBSS are Iceland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Germany, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Poland, Russia, and the European Commission. Its observer states are Belarus, France, Italy, Netherlands, Romania, Slovakia, Spain, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Ukraine. The Nordic Council of Ministers and Lithuania engage in political cooperation to attain mutual goals and to determine new trends and possibilities for joint cooperation. The Council's Information Office aims to disseminate Nordic concepts and to demonstrate and promote Nordic cooperation. Lithuania, together with the five Nordic countries and the two other Baltic countries, is a member of the Nordic Investment Bank and cooperates in its NORDPLUS program, which is committed to education. The Baltic Development Forum BDF is an independent non-profit organization that unites large companies, cities, business associations and institutions in the Baltic Sea region. In 2010 the BDF's 12th summit was held in Vilnius. Lithuania maintains greatly warm mutual relations with Georgia and strongly supports its European Union and NATO aspirations. During the Russo-Georgian War in 2008, when the Russian troops were occupying the territory of Georgia and approaching towards the Georgian capital Tbilisi, President Valdis Adamkus, together with the Polish and Ukrainian presidents, went to Tbilisi by answering to the Georgians' request of the international assistance. Shortly, Lithuanians and the Lithuanian Catholic Church also began collecting financial support for the war victims. In 2004 to 2009, Dalia Griboskaite served as European Commissioner for Financial Programming and the Budget within the Jose Manuel Barroso-led Commission. In 2013, Lithuania was elected to the United Nations Security Council for a two-year term, becoming the first Baltic country elected to this post. During its membership, Lithuania actively supported Ukraine and often condemned Russia for the military intervention in Ukraine, immediately earning vast Ukrainians' esteem. As the war in Donbass progressed, President Dalia Griboskaite has compared the Russian President Vladimir Putin to Joseph Stalin and to Adolf Hitler. She has also called Russia a terrorist state. In 2018, Lithuania, along with Latvia and Estonia, were awarded the Peace of Westphalia Prize for their exceptional model of democratic development and contribution to peace in the continent. Military 
The Lithuanian Armed Forces is the name for the Unified Armed Forces of Lithuanian Land Force, Lithuanian Air Force, Lithuanian Naval Force, Lithuanian Special Operations Force and other units, Logistics Command, Training and Doctrine Command, Headquarters Battalion, Military Police. Directly subordinated to the Chief of Defense are the Special Operations Forces and Military Police. The reserve forces are under command of the Lithuanian National Defense Volunteer Forces. The Lithuanian Armed Forces consist of some 15,000 active personnel, which may be supported by reserve forces. Compulsory conscription ended in 2008 but was reintroduced in 2015. The Lithuanian Armed Forces currently have deployed personnel on international missions in Afghanistan, Kosovo, Mali and Somalia. In March 2004, Lithuania became a full member of the NATO. Since then, fighter jets of NATO members are deployed in Zokniai Airport and provide safety for the Baltic airspace. Since the summer of 2005 Lithuania has been part of the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan leading a provincial reconstruction team in the town of Chagcharan in the province of Ghor. The PRT includes personnel from Denmark, Iceland and USA. There are also Special Operation Forces units in Afghanistan, placed in Kandahar province. Since joining international operations in 1994, Lithuania has lost two soldiers, First Lieutenant Normundas Valteris fell in Bosnia, as his patrol vehicle drove over a mine. Sergeant R. Unas Jarmolovichis was fatally wounded during an attack on the camp of his provincial reconstruction team in Afghanistan. The Lithuanian national defense policy aims to guarantee the preservation of the independence and sovereignty of the state, the integrity of its land, territorial waters and airspace, and its constitutional order. Its main strategic goals are to defend the country's interests, and to maintain and expand the capabilities of its armed forces so they may contribute to and participate in the missions of NATO and European Union member states. The Defense Ministry is responsible for combat forces, search and rescue, and intelligence operations. The 5,000 border guards fall under the Interior Ministry's supervision and are responsible for border protection, passport and customs duties, and share responsibility with the Navy for smuggling and drug trafficking interdiction. A special security department handles VIP protection and communications security. In 2015 National Cyber Security Center of Lithuania was created. Paramilitary organization Lithuanian Riflemen's Union acts as civilian self-defense institution. According to NATO, in 2017 Lithuania allocated 1.77% of its GDP to the national defense. For a long time Lithuania lagged behind NATO allies in terms of defense spending, but in recent years it has begun to rapidly increase the funding. In 2018 Lithuania intends to allocate 2.06% of its GDP to the defence sector and reach the required funding standard for NATO. Economy Lithuania has open and mixed economy that is classified as high-income economy by the World Bank. According to data from 2016, the three largest sectors in Lithuanian economy are, services 68.3% of GDP, industry 28.5% and agriculture 3.3%. World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Report ranks Lithuania 41st of 137 ranked countries. 
Lithuania joined NATO in 2004, EU in 2004, Schengen in 2007, and OECD in 2018. On the 1st of January 2015, euro became the national currency, replacing liras at the rate of one euro equals 3.45280 Lithuanian litas. Agricultural products and food made 18.3%. Chemical products and plastics 17.8%, machinery and appliances 15.8%, mineral products 14.7%, wood and furniture 12.5% of exports. According to data from 2016, more than half of all Lithuanian exports go to seven countries including Russia 14%, Latvia 9, 9%, Poland 9, 1%, Germany 7, 7%, Estonia 5, 3%, Sweden 4, 8% and United Kingdom 4, 3%. Export generated 74% of Lithuania's GDP in 2016. Lithuanian GDP experienced very high real growth rates for decade up to 2009, peaking at 11.1% in 2007. As a result, the country was often termed as a Baltic tiger. However, in 2009 due to a global financial crisis marked experienced a drastic decline, GDP contracted by 14.9% and unemployment rate reached 17.8% in 2010. After the decline of 2009, Lithuanian annual economic growth has been much slower compared to pre-2009 years. According to IMF, financial conditions are conducive to growth and financial soundness indicators remain strong. The public debt ratio in 2016 fell to 40% of GDP, to compare with 42.7 in 2015 before global finance crisis 15% of GDP in 2008. On average, more than 95% of all foreign direct investment in Lithuania comes from European Union countries. Sweden is historically the largest investor with 20% to 30% of all FDI in Lithuania. FDI into Lithuania spiked in 2017, reaching its highest ever recorded number of greenfield investment projects. In 2017, Lithuania was third country, after Ireland and Singapore by the average job value of investment projects. The U.S. was the leading source country in 2017, 24.59% of total FDI. Next up are Germany and the U.K., each representing 11.48% of total project numbers. Based on the Eurostats data, in 2017, the value of Lithuanian exports recorded the most rapid growth not only in the Baltic countries, but also across Europe, which was 16.9%. In the period between 2004 and 2016, one out of five Lithuanians left the country, mostly because of insufficient income situation or seeking the new experience and studies abroad. Long-term emigration and economy growth has resulted in noticeable shortages on the labor market and growth in salaries being larger than growth in labor efficiency. Unemployment rate in 2017 was 8.1%. As of 2018, Lithuanian mean wealth per adult is $24,600, while total national wealth is $57 billion. As of third quarter of 2018, the average gross pre-tax monthly salary in Lithuania is 935 euros, 1064 dollars, translating to 728 euros net after tax, while average pension is 307 euros per month. Average wage adjusted for purchasing power parity is around 1912 United States dollars per month, one of the lowest in EU. 
Although, cost of living in the country also is sufficiently less with the price level for household final consumption expenditure HFCE 63, being 39% lower than EU average 102 in 2016, Lithuania has a flat tax rate rather than a progressive scheme. According to Eurostat, the personal income tax 15% and corporate tax 15% rates in Lithuania are among the lowest in the EU. The country has the lowest implicit rate of tax on capital 9.8% in the EU. Corporate tax rate in Lithuania is 15% and 5% for small businesses. Seven free economic zones are operating in Lithuania. Information technology production is growing in the country, reaching 1.9 billion euros in 2016. In 2017, only 35 fintech companies came to Lithuania, a result of Lithuanian government and Bank of Lithuania simplified procedures for obtaining licenses for the activities of e-money and payment institutions. Europe's first international blockchain centre launched in Vilnius in 2018. Lithuania has granted a total of 39 e-money licenses, second in the EU only to the UK with 128 licenses. In 2018 Google set up a payment company in Lithuania. <laughs> companies Biggest companies in Lithuania in 2016, by revenue. Agriculture Agriculture in Lithuania dates to the Neolithic period, about 3000–1000 BC. It has been one of Lithuania's most important occupations for many centuries. Lithuania's accession to the European Union in 2004 ushered in a new agricultural era. The EU pursues a very high standard of food safety and purity. In 1999, the SEMAS of Lithuania adopted a law on product safety, and in 2000 it adopted a law on food. The reform of the agricultural market has been carried out on the basis of these two laws. In 2016, agricultural production was made for €2.29 billion Euros in Lithuania. Cereal crops occupied the largest part of it 5,709, 7 tons, other significant types were sugar beets 933, 9 tons, rapeseed 392, 5 tons, and potatoes 340, 2 tons. Products for 4,385, 2 million euros were exported from Lithuania to the foreign markets, of which products for 3,165, 2 million euros were Lithuanian origin. Export of agricultural and food products accounted for 19.4% of all exports of goods from the country. Organic farming is constantly becoming more popular in Lithuania. The status of organic growers and producers in the country is granted by the public body Ecoagros. In 2016, there were 2,539 such farms that occupied 225,541, 78 hectares. Of these, 43, 13% were cereals, 31, 22% were perennial grasses, 13, 9% were leguminous crops and 11, 75% were others. Topic Science and Technology Foundation of the University of Vilnius in 1579 was a major factor of establishing local scientist community in Lithuania and making connections with other universities and scientists of Europe. Georg Forster, Jean Emanuel Gilibert, Johann Peter Frank, and many other visiting scientists have worked at University of Vilnius. 
Lithuanian Bajoras and Grand Duchy of Lithuania artillery expert Kazimieras Simonovichis is a pioneer of rocketry, who has published Artis Magne Artillery in 1650 that for over two centuries was used in Europe as a basic artillery manual and contains a large chapter on caliber, construction, production and properties of rockets for military and civil purposes, including multistage rockets, batteries of rockets, and rockets with delta wing stabilizers. A botanist Jurgis Pabreza created first systematic guide of Lithuanian Flora Tatius Agumenis botany, written in Samogitian dialect, the Latin Lithuanian Dictionary of Plant Names, first Lithuanian textbook of geography. During the interwar period humanitarian and social scientists emerged such as Vasilius Sezamanas, Levas Karsavinas, Mikolas Ramaris. Due to the world wars, Lithuanian science and scientists suffered heavily from the occupants, however some of them reached a world-class achievements in their lifetime. Most notably, Antanas Gustaitis, Vitatas Griciunas, Maria Gimbutas, Byrat Galdikas, A. J. Cleor, Algirdas Julius Grimas, medievalist Jurgis Baltrusitis, Algirdas Antanas Avazinas, Jonas Kabilius, long-term rector of the University of Vilnius is known for works in probabilistic number theory, Kabilius model, theorem of Kabilius and turin Kabilius inequality bear his name. Jonas Kabilius successfully resisted attempts to Russify the University of Vilnius. Nowadays, the country is among moderate innovators group in the International Innovation Index, and in the European Innovation Scoreboard ranked 15th among EU countries. Lasers and biotechnology are flagship fields of the Lithuanian science and high tech industry. Lithuanian light conversion has developed a femtosecond laser system that has 80% market share worldwide, and is used in DNA research, ophthalmological surgeries, nanotech industry and science. Vilnius University Laser Research Center has developed one of the most powerful femtosecond lasers in the world dedicated primarily to oncological diseases. In 1963, Vytautas Strazis and his co-workers created Vilnius photometric system that is used in astronomy. Non-invasive intracranial pressure and blood flow measuring devices were developed by KTU scientist A. Ragauskas. K. Pyragas contributed to control of chaos with his way of delayed feedback control, Pyragas method. Kavli Prize laureate Virginius Sinis is known for his discoveries in CRISPR field, invention of CRISPR CAS9. Lithuania has launched three satellites to the cosmos, LITSAT-1, Litwanica Sat-1 and LITUANICASAT-2. Lithuanian Museum of Ethnocosmology and Molotai Astronomical Observatory is located in Kulyanis. Fifteen R&D institutions are members of Lithuanian Space Association. Lithuania is a cooperating state with European Space Agency. Ramontis Stankovicius is the only ethnically Lithuanian astronaut. Lithuania in 2018 became associated member state of CERN. Most advanced scientific research in Lithuania is being conducted at the Life Sciences Center, Center for Physical Sciences and Technology. Brolis Semiconductors producing beyond state-of-the-art technology solutions for security and medical sensing applications. As of 2016 calculations, yearly growth of Lithuania's biotech and life science sector was 22% over the past five years. 
16 academic institutions, 15 R&D centers, science parks and innovation valleys, and more than 370 manufacturers operate in the Lithuanian life science and biotech industry. In 2008, the Valley Development Program was started aiming to upgrade Lithuanian scientific research infrastructure and encourage business and science cooperation. Five R&D valleys were launched: Jurinis (Maritime Technologies), Namunas (Agro, Bioenergy, Forestry), Solitekas (Laser and Light, Semiconductor), Santara (Biotechnology, Medicine), Santaka (Sustainable Chemistry and Pharmacy). Lithuanian Innovation Center is created to provide support for innovations and research institutions. Topic tourism statistics of 2016 showed that 1.49 million tourists from foreign countries visited Lithuania and spent at least one night in the country. The largest number of tourists came from Germany 174, 8,000, Belarus 171, 9,000, Russia 150, 6,000, Poland 148, 4,000, Latvia 134, 4,000, Ukraine 84, 0,000, and the UK 58, 2,000. The total contribution of travel and tourism to country GDP was €2,005.50 Minnesota, 5.3% of GDP in 2016, and is forecast to rise by 7.3% in 2017, and to rise by 4.2% PA to €3,243.50 Minnesota, 6.7% of GDP in 2027. Hot air ballooning is very popular in Lithuania, especially in Vilnius and Trakai. Bicycle tourism is growing, especially in Lithuanian seaside cycle route. Eurovelo routes EV10, EV11, EV13 go through Lithuania. Total length of bicycle tracks amounts to 3,769 km of which 1,988 km is asphalt pavement. Namunas Delta Regional Park and Zuvinta's Biosphere Reserve are known for birdwatching. Domestic tourism has been on the rise as well. Currently there are up to 1,000 places of attraction in Lithuania. Most tourists visit the big cities, Vilnius, Klaipeda, and Kaunas, seaside resorts, such as Naranga, Palanga, and spa towns, Druskaninkai, Burstonas. Infrastructure Communication Lithuania has a well-developed communications infrastructure. The country has 2, 8 million citizens and 5 million SIM cards. The largest LTE 4G mobile network covers 97% of Lithuania's territory. Usage of fixed phone lines has been rapidly decreasing due to rapid expansion of mobile cellular services. In 2017, Lithuania was top 30 in the world by average mobile broadband speeds and top 20 by average fixed broadband speeds. Lithuania was also top 7 in 2017 in the list of countries by 4G LTE penetration. In 2016, Lithuania was ranked 17th in United Nations e participation index. There are four Tier 3 data centers in Lithuania. Lithuania is 44th globally ranked country on data center density according to CloudScene, Long Term Project 2005 2013 development of rural areas broadband network RAIN was started with the objective to provide residents, state and municipal authorities and businesses with fiber optic broadband access in rural areas. RAIN infrastructure allows 51 communications operators to provide network services to their clients. 
The project was funded by the European Union and the Lithuanian government. 72% of Lithuanian households have access to Internet, a number which in 2017 was among EU's lowest and in 2016 ranked 97th by CIA World Factbook. Number of households with Internet access is expected to increase and reach 77% by 2021. Almost 50% of Lithuanians had smartphones in 2016, a number that is expected to increase to 65% by 2022. Lithuania has the highest FTTH fiber to the home penetration rate in Europe, 36.8% in September 2016, according to FTTH Council Europe. Topic: Transport. Lithuania received its first railway connection in the middle of the 19th century, when the Warsaw-St. Petersburg Railway was constructed. It included a stretch from Dogovpils via Vilnius and Kaunas to Verbalis. The first and only still operating tunnel was completed in 1860. Lithuanian Railway's main network consists of 1,762 kilometers (1,095 miles) of 1,520 millimeters (4 feet 11.8 in) Russian gauge railway, of which 122 kilometers (76 miles) are electrified. This railway network is incompatible with European standard gauge and requires train switching. However, Lithuanian railway network also has 115 kilometers, 71 miles of standard gauge lines. More than half of all inland freight transported in Lithuania is carried by rail. The Trans-European Standard Gauge Rail Baltica Railway, linking Helsinki Tallinn Riga Kaunas Warsaw and continuing on to Berlin is under construction. In 2017, Lietuvos Gelazinkaliai, a company that operates most railway lines in Lithuania, received EU penalty for breaching EU's antitrust laws and restricting competition. Transportation is the third largest sector in Lithuanian economy. Lithuanian transport companies drew attention in 2016 and 2017 with huge and record breaking orders of trucks. Almost 90% of commercial truck traffic in Lithuania is international transports, the highest of any EU country. Lithuania has an extensive network of motorways. WEF grades Lithuanian roads at 4, 7 7, 0 and Lithuanian Road Authority LAKD at 6, 5 10, 0. The port of Klaipeda is the only commercial cargo port in Lithuania. In 2011 45.5 million tons of cargo were handled including Butinj oil terminal figures Port of Klaipeda is outside of EU's 20 largest ports, but is the eighth largest port in the Baltic Sea region with ongoing expansion plans. Vilnius International Airport is the largest airport in Lithuania, but not among EU's 100 largest airports. It served 3.8 million passengers in 2016. Other international airports include Kaunas International Airport, Palanga International Airport and Shole International Airport. Kaunas International Airport is also a small commercial cargo airport which started regular commercial cargo traffic in 2011. Water supply and sanitation Lithuania has one of the largest fresh water supplies, compared with other countries in Europe. Lithuania and Denmark are the only countries in Europe, which are fully equipped with fresh groundwater. 
Lithuanians consumes about 0.5 million cubic meters of water per day, which is only 12 to 14 percent of all explored fresh groundwater resources. Water quality in the country is very high and is determined by the fact that drinking water comes from deep layers that are protected from pollution on the surface of the earth. Drilling depth usually reaches 30 to 50 meters, but in Klaipeda region it even reaches 250 meters. Consequently, Lithuania is one of very few European countries where groundwater is used for centralized water supply. With a large underground fresh water reserves, Lithuania exports mineral-rich water to other countries. Approved mineral water quantity is about 2.7 million cubic meters per year, while production is only 4 to 5 percent of all mineral water resources. Vilnius is the only Baltic capital that uses centralized water supplying from deep water springs, which are protected from pollution and has no nitrates or nitrites that are harmful to the human body. Water is cleaned without chemicals in Lithuania. About 20% of the consumed water in the state is a non-filtered very high quality water. Energy Systematic diversification of energy imports and resources is Lithuania's key energy strategy. Long-term aims were defined in National Energy Independence Strategy in 2012 by Lietuvos Simas. It was estimated that strategic energy independence initiatives will cost 6.3 to 7.8 billion euro in total and provide annual savings of 0.9–1.1 billion euros. After the decommissioning of the Ignalina nuclear power plant, Lithuania turned from electricity exporter to electricity importer. Unit No. 1 was closed in December 2004. As a condition of Lithuania's entry into the European Union, Unit No. 2 was closed down on 31 December 2009. Proposals have been made to construct a new, Visaginas nuclear power plant in Lithuania. However, a non-binding referendum held in October 2012 clouded the prospects for the Visaginas project, as 63% of voters said no to a new nuclear power plant. The country's main primary source of electrical power is Electronai power plant. Other primary sources of Lithuania's electrical power are Kruonis Pumped Storage Plant and Kana's Hydroelectric Power Plant. Kruonis Pumped Storage Plant is the only in the Baltic states power plant to be used for regulation of the power system's operation with generating capacity of 900 MW for at least 12 hours. As of 2015, 66% of electrical power was imported. First geothermal heating plant, Klipeda Geothermal Demonstration Plant in the Baltic Sea region was built in 2004. Lithuania Sweden Submarine Electricity Interconnection Nordbalt and Lithuania Poland Electricity Interconnection Litpol Link were launched at the end of 2015, in order to break down Gazprom's monopoly in natural gas market of Lithuania. First large scale LNG import terminal LNG FSRU in the Baltic region was built in Port of Klaipeda in 2014. The Klaipeda LNG terminal was called Independence, thus emphasizing the aim to diversify energy market of Lithuania. Norwegian company Equinor supplies 540 million cubic meters, 19 billion cubic feet of natural gas annually from 2015 until 2020. 
The terminal is able to meet the Lithuania's demand 100%, and Latvia's and Estonia's national demand 90% in the future. Gas Interconnection Poland Lithuania, GIPL, also known as Lithuania Poland Pipeline, is a proposed natural gas pipeline interconnection between Lithuania and Poland that is expected to be finished by 2019. In 2018 synchronizing the Baltic states electricity grid with the synchronous grid of continental Europe has started. In 2016, 28% of electricity consumed in Lithuania came from renewable sources. Demographics <inaudible> 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 Since the Neolithic period the native inhabitants of the Lithuanian territory have not been replaced by any other ethnic group, so there is a high probability that the inhabitants of present-day Lithuania have preserved the genetic composition of their forebears relatively undisturbed by the major demographic movements, although without being actually isolated from them. The Lithuanian population appears to be relatively homogeneous, without apparent genetic differences among ethnic subgroups. A 2004 analysis of mtDNA in the Lithuanian population revealed that Lithuanians are close to the Slavic and Finno Ugric speaking populations of Northern and Eastern Europe. Y chromosome SNP haplogroup analysis showed Lithuanians to be closest to Latvians and Estonians. According to 2014 estimates, the age structure of the population was as follows 0 to 14 years, 13.5%, male 243,001, female 230,674, 15 to 64 years, 69.5%. Male 1,200,196, female 1,235,300, 65 years and over, 16.8%, male 207,222, female 389,345. The median age was 41.2 years, male 38.5, female 43.7. Lithuania has a sub-replacement fertility rate. The total fertility rate (TFR) in Lithuania is 1.59 children born woman. 2015 estimates. As of 2014, 29% of births were to unmarried women. The age at first marriage in 2013 was 27 years for women and 29.3 years for men. Ethnic groups Ethnic Lithuanians make up about five-sixths of the country's population and Lithuania has the most homogeneous population in the Baltic states. In 2015, the population of Lithuania stands at 2,921,262, 84.2% of whom are ethnic Lithuanians who speak Lithuanian, which is the official language of the country. Several sizable minorities exist, such as Poles 6.6%, Russians 5.8%, Belarusians 1.2%, and Ukrainians 0.5%. Poles in Lithuania are the largest minority, concentrated in southeast Lithuania, the Vilnius region. Russians in Lithuania are the second largest minority, concentrated mostly in two cities. They constitute sizable minorities in Vilnius 12% and Klaipeda 19.6% and a majority in the town of Visaginas 52%. About 3,000 Roma live in Lithuania, mostly in Vilnius, Kaunas, and Panavesis. Their organizations are supported by the National Minority and Emigration Department. 
For centuries, a small Tatar community has flourished in Lithuania. The official language is Lithuanian. Other languages, such as Polish, Russian, Belarusian, and Ukrainian, are spoken in the larger cities, and several municipalities, such as Salsaninkai District Municipality, Vilnius District Municipality, and Visaginas Municipality. Yiddish is spoken by members of the tiny remaining Jewish community in Lithuania. According to the Lithuanian population census of 2011, about 85% of the country's population speak Lithuanian as their native language, 7,2% are native speakers of Russian and 5,3% of Polish. About 39% of Lithuanian citizens speak Russian as a foreign language, 20% English, 9% German, 6% Polish, 3% French. Most Lithuanian schools teach English as the first foreign language, but students may also study German, or, in some schools, French or Russian. Schools where Russian or Polish are the primary languages of education exist in the areas populated by these minorities. Minority schools are public, where the education is free, taxpayer funded. Lithuania has accepted quota refugees under the migrant plan agreed upon by EU member states in 2015. Topic Urbanization There has been a steady movement of population to the cities since the 1990s, encouraged by the planning of regional centers, such as Alidus, Marahampol, Utina, Plunge, and Mazaikiai. By the early 21st century, about two-thirds of the total population lived in urban areas. As of 2015, 66.5% of the total population lives in urban areas. Lithuania's functional urban areas include Vilnius, population 696,000 in 2016, and Kaunas, population 387,000 in 2016. The FDI of the Financial Times in their research cities and regions of the future 2018-19 ranked Vilnius fourth in the mid-sized European cities category and Vilnius County was ranked tenth in the small European regions category. <laughs> Health Lithuania provides free state-funded healthcare to all citizens and registered long-term residents. Private healthcare is also available in the country. In 2003–2012, the network of hospitals was restructured, as part of wider healthcare service reforms. It started in 2003–2005 with the expansion of ambulatory services and primary care. In 2016, Lithuania ranked 27th in Europe in the Euro Health Consumer Index, a ranking of European healthcare systems based on waiting time, results and other indicators. As of 2015 Lithuanian life expectancy at birth was 73.4 67.4 years for males and 78.8 for females and the infant mortality rate was 6.2 per 1,000 births. The annual population growth rate increased by 0.3% in 2007. At 33.5 people per 100,000 in 2012, Lithuania has seen a dramatic rise in suicides in the post-Soviet years, and now records the highest in Europe cases in rural areas are five times more frequent than in cities and fourth highest age standardized suicide rate in the world, according to WHO. 
According to experts, this number was largely influenced by the Soviets' authority because mostly Christian countries' inhabitants previously considered it as a severe sin and were afraid to take their lives. By 2000, the vast majority of Lithuanian health care institutions were non profit making enterprises and a private sector developed, providing mostly outpatient services which are paid for out of pocket. The Ministry of Health also runs a few health care facilities and is involved in the running of the two major Lithuanian teaching hospitals. It is responsible for the State Public Health Centre which manages the public health network including ten county public health centres with their local branches. The ten counties run county hospitals and specialized health care facilities. There is now compulsory health insurance for Lithuanian residents. There are five territorial health insurance funds, covering Vilnius, Kaunas, Klaipeda, Šiaulė, and Panevėžys. Contributions for people who are economically active are 9% of income. Emergency medical services are provided free of charge to all residents. Access to hospital treatment is normally by referral by a general practitioner. Lithuania also has one of the lowest health care prices in Europe. Topic: Religion. According to the 2011 census, 77.2% of residents of Lithuania were Catholics. Catholicism has been the main religion since the official Christianization of Lithuania in 1387. The Catholic Church was prosecuted by the Russian Empire as part of the Russification policies and by the Soviet Union as part of the overall anti religious campaigns. During the Soviet era, some priests actively led the resistance against the communist regime, as symbolized by the Hill of Crosses and exemplified by the Chronicle of the Catholic Church in Lithuania. 4.1% of the population are Eastern Orthodox, mainly among the Russian minority. The community of old believers, 0.8% of population, dates back to 1660s. Protestants are 0.8%, of which 0.6% are Lutheran and 0.2% are Reformed. The Reformation did not impact Lithuania to a great extent as seen in East Prussia, Estonia, or Latvia. Before World War II, according to Losch the Lutherans were 3.3% of the total population. They were mainly Germans and Prussian Lithuanians in the Klaipeda region Memel territory. This population fled or was expelled after the war, and today Protestantism is mainly represented by ethnic Lithuanians throughout the northern and western parts of the country, as well as in large urban areas. Newly arriving evangelical churches have established missions in Lithuania since 1990. The historical communities of Lipka Tatars maintain Islam as their religion. Lithuania was historically home to a significant Jewish community and was an important center of Jewish scholarship and culture from the 18th century until the eve of World War II. Of the approximately 220,000 Jews who lived in Lithuania in June 1941, almost all were killed during the Holocaust. The Lithuanian Jewish community numbered about 4,000 at the end of 2009. Romuva, the neo pagan revival of the ancient religious practices, has gained popularity over the years. Romuva claims to continue living pagan traditions, which survived in folklore and customs. Romuva is a polytheistic pagan faith, which asserts the sanctity of nature and has elements of ancestor worship. According to the 2001 census, there were 1,270 people of Baltic faith in Lithuania. That number jumped to 5,118 in the 2011 census. Topic: 
Topic: Education. The Constitution of Lithuania mandates 10-year education ending at age 16 and guarantees a free public higher education for students deemed good. The Ministry of Education and Science of the Republic of Lithuania proposes national educational policies and goals that are then voted for in the SEMAs. Laws govern long-term educational strategy along with general laws on standards for higher education, vocational training, law and science, adult education, and special education. 5.4% of GDP or 15.4% of total public expenditure was spent for education in 2016. According to the World Bank, the literacy rate among Lithuanians aged 15 years and older is 100%. School attendance rates are above EU average and school leave is less common than in the EU. According to Eurostat Lithuania leads among other countries of EU by people with secondary education 93.3%. Based on OECD data, Lithuania is among the top five countries in the world by post-secondary tertiary education attainment. As of 2016, 54.9% of the population aged 25 to 34, and 30.7% of the population aged 55 to 64 had completed tertiary education. The share of tertiary educated 25 to 64 year olds in STEM science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields in Lithuania were above the OECD average, 29% and 26% respectively, similarly to business, administration and law, 25% and 23% respectively. Modern Lithuanian education system has multiple structural problems. Insufficient funding, quality issues, and decreasing student population are the most prevalent. Lithuanian teacher salaries are lowest in entire EU. Low teacher salaries was the primary reason behind national teacher strikes in 2014, 2015, and 2016. Salaries in the higher education sector are also low. Many Lithuanian professors have a second job to supplement their income. PISA report from 2010 found that Lithuanian results in math, science and reading were below OECD average. PISA report from 2015 reconfirmed these findings. The population ages 6 to 19 has decreased by 36% between 2005 and 2015. As a result, the student-teacher ratio is decreasing and expenditure per student is increasing, but schools, particularly in rural areas, are forced into reorganizations and consolidations. As with other Baltic nations, in particular Latvia, the large volume of higher education graduates within the country, coupled with the high rate of spoken second languages is contributing to an education brain drain. As of 2008, there were 15 public and 6 private universities as well as 16 public and 11 private colleges in Lithuania see, List of universities in Lithuania. Vilnius University is one of the oldest universities in Northern Europe and the largest university in Lithuania. Kaunas University of Technology is the largest technical university in the Baltic states and the second largest university in Lithuania. In an attempt to reduce costs and adapt to sharply decreasing number of high school students, Lithuanian Parliament decided to reduce the number of universities in Lithuania. In early 2018, Lithuanian Sports University was merged into Lithuanian University of Health Sciences and Lithuanian University of Educational Sciences and Aleksandras Stulginskis University were merged into Vytautas Magnus University. Culture Uh, 
Topic: <laughs> Lithuanian language. The Lithuanian language is the official state language of Lithuania and is recognized as one of the official languages of the European Union. There are about 2.96 million native Lithuanian speakers in Lithuania and about 0.2 million abroad. Lithuanian is a Baltic language, closely related to Latvian, although they are not mutually intelligible. It is written in an adapted version of the Roman script. Lithuanian is believed to be the linguistically most conservative living Indo-European tongue, retaining many features of Proto-Indo-European. Lithuanian language studies are important for comparative linguistics and for reconstruction of Proto-Indo-European language. Lithuanian was studied by linguists such as Franz Bopp, August Schleicher, Adalbert Bezenberger, Louis Helmslev, Ferdinand de Saussure, Winfred P. Lehmann, Vladimir Toporov and others. In the modern times, the Lithuanian language is divided into two dialects, Oxtatian dialect and Samogitian dialect. The pronunciation of words varies in both dialects. The Samogitian dialect also has many completely different words and is even considered as a separate language by some linguists. The groundwork for written Lithuanian was laid in 16th and 17th centuries by Lithuanian noblemen and scholars, who promoted Lithuanian language, created dictionaries, and published books. Mykologis Doxa, Stanislovas Rapolianis, Abraomas Kulvietis, Jonas Bretkunas, Martinus. Masvidus, Konstantinas Servetus, Simonis Vaisnoras Varnaskis. The first grammar book of the Lithuanian language Grammatica Litvanica was published in Latin in 1653 by Danielius Kleinas. Jonas Jablonski's works and activities are especially important for the Lithuanian literature moving from the use of dialects to a standard Lithuanian language. The linguistic material which he collected was published in the 20 volumes of Academic Dictionary of Lithuanian and is still being used in research and in editing of texts and books. He also introduced the letter U into Lithuanian writing. <laughs> Literature There is a great deal of Lithuanian literature written in Latin, the main scholarly language of the Middle Ages. The Edicts of the Lithuanian King Mendogus is the prime example of the literature of this kind. The letters of Gediminas are another crucial heritage of the Lithuanian Latin writings. One of the first Lithuanian authors who wrote in Latin was Nikolaus Husovianus around 1480 after 1533. His poem Carmen de Statura, Ferritate a C. Venationi Bicentis a song about the appearance, savagery and hunting of the bison, published in 1523, describes the Lithuanian landscape, way of life and customs, touches on some actual political problems, and reflects the clash of paganism and Christianity. A person under the pseudonym Mikalo Lichuanus around 1490 to 1560 wrote a treatise De Moribus Tartarorum, Lituanorum et Moscorum on the customs of Tatars, Lithuanians and Muscovites in the middle of the 16th century, but it was not published until 1615. An extraordinary figure in the cultural life of Lithuania in the 16th century was the lawyer and poet of Spanish origin Petrus Roitius Morris Alcagnicensis around 1505–1571. The publicist, lawyer, and mayor of Vilnius, Augustinus Rotundus around 1520–1582 wrote a no longer existent history of Lithuania in Latin around the year 1560. Loans Ridvanus, a humanist poet of the second half of the 16th century, wrote an epic poem imitating the Aeneid of Virgil. His Radavilias, intended to become the Lithuanian national epic, was published in Vilnius in 1588. 
17th century Lithuanian scholars also wrote in Latin. Kazimieras Kojelevichus Vijukas, Zygimantas Liauksminas are known for their Latin writings in theology, rhetorics, and music. Albertus Kojelovicius Vijukas wrote first printed Lithuanian history Historia Lithuania. Lithuanian literary works in the Lithuanian language started being first published in the 16th century. In 1547 Martinus Masvidus compiled and published the first printed Lithuanian book Catechismo Prosti Zagiai, the simple words of catechism, which marks the beginning of literature, printed in Lithuanian. He was followed by Mykologis Doxa with catechismas. In the 16th and 17th centuries, as in the whole Christian Europe, Lithuanian literature was primarily religious. The evolution of the old 14th 18th century Lithuanian literature ends with Christionas Donalaitis, one of the most prominent authors of the Age of Enlightenment. Donalaitis' poem Metai, The Seasons, is a landmark of the Lithuanian fiction literature, written in hexameter, with a mix of classicism, sentimentalism, and romanticism. The Lithuanian literature of the first half of the 19th century is represented by Mayoronis, Antanas Baranauskas, Simonis Daukantas, and Simonis Stanovichis. During the Tsarist annexation of Lithuania in the 19th century, the Lithuanian press ban was implemented, which led to the formation of the Nignizhai book smugglers movement. This movement is thought to be the very reason the Lithuanian language and literature survived until today. 20th-century Lithuanian literature is represented by Uuzas Tumas Vaisgantas, Antanas Vienuolis, Bernardas Brasjonas, Antanas Schema, Bailey's Sruoga, Vaitatas Masernas and Justinas Marsinkovicis. In 21st century debuted Kristina Sabalauskaite, Renata Saralite, Valdis Papivas, Laura Cynthia Cernauskaite, Ruta Sepetis. Architecture Several famous Lithuania-related architects are notable for their achievements in the field of architecture. Johann Christoph Globitz, Marcin Nakfis, Lorinas Gutchevichis and Karol Podchazinski were instrumental in introducing Baroque and neoclassical architectural movements to the Lithuanian architecture during the 17th to 19th centuries. Vilnius is considered as a capital of the Eastern Europe Baroque. Vilnius Old Town that is full of astonishing Baroque churches and other buildings is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Lithuania is also known for numerous castles. About 20 castles exist in Lithuania. Some castles had to be rebuilt or survive partially. Many Lithuanian nobles' historic palaces and manor houses have remained till the nowadays and were reconstructed. Lithuanian village life has existed since the days of Vytautas the Great. Zirvinos and Kapiniskis are two of many ethnographic villages in Lithuania. Rumsiskis is an open space museum where old ethnographic architecture is preserved. During the interwar period, Art Deco, Lithuanian National Romanticism architectural style buildings were constructed in the Lithuania's temporary capital Kaunas. Its architecture is regarded as one of the finest examples of the European Art Deco and has received the European Heritage label. <laughs> Arts and museums Franciscus Smuglevichus, Jan Rustam, Uuzapas Oleskovicius and Kanutas Rusekas are the most prominent Lithuanian painters of the 18th and 19th centuries. The Lithuanian Art Museum was founded in 1933 and is the largest museum of art conservation and display in Lithuania. 
Among other important museums are the Palanga Amber Museum, where amber pieces comprise a major part of the collection, National Gallery of Art, presenting collection of Lithuanian art of the 20th and 21st century, National Museum of Lithuania presenting Lithuanian archaeology, history and ethnic culture. In 2018 two private museums were opened, Mo Museum devoted to modern and contemporary Lithuanian art and Tartal, exhibiting a collection of Lithuanian art heritage and artifacts. Perhaps the most renowned figure in Lithuania's art community was the composer Mykologis Konstantinas Sirlonis an internationally renowned musician. The 2420 Sirlonis asteroid, identified in 1975, honors his achievements. The M. K. Sirlonis National Art Museum, as well as the only military museum in Lithuania, Vytautas the Great War Museum, are located in Kaunas. Other notable artists includes Jonas Mikas, Jurgis Masiunas, Petras Kalpokas, Antanas Zamudzinovichis, Jonas Sileka, Justinas Vienazinskis, Kajitonas Sklarius, Adomas Varnas, Petras Rimsa, Uuzas Zikaras, Vytatas Kyrakstis, Vinkas Gribas, Stasis Usinskas, Bronius Punzius, Ludas Trukis, Robertas Antinis, Antanas Juditis, Antanas Samiolis, Jonas Makenas, Antanas Zukaskis, Victoras Visgerda, Ramontis Dishevichis, Elvira Catalina Kriachunate, Saronis Saka, Uuzas Statkovichis. Theatre Lithuania has some very famous theatre directors well known in the country and abroad. One of them is Oskaras Korsanovas. He was awarded more than 40 times with special prizes. Possibly most prestigious award is Swedish Commander Grand Cross, Order of the Polar Star. Today's the most famous theatres in Lithuania are in Vilnius, Kaunas, Klaipeda and Panavesis. It is Lithuanian National Drama Theatre, Kaisawoliu Teatras, Theatre of Freaks in Vilnius, Kaunas National Drama Theatre, Theatre of Oskaras Korsanovas, Klaipeda Drama Theatre, Theatre of Gitis Ivanauskas, Miltinis Drama Theatre in Panavesis, The Dolls Theatre, Russian Drama Theatre and others. There are some very popular theatre festivals like Sirenos Sirens, Theatrium, Nurk i Teatra Dive into the theater, and others. The figures dominating in Lithuanian theatre world are directors like Imuntis Necrotius, Jonas Vaitkis, Caesarus Grazinis, Gintaras Varnas, Dalia Ibelhauptate, Arturas Arima, number of talented actors like Danius Gavinonis, Rolandus Kaslas, Saulius Balandis, Gabia Jaramanite and many others. Cinema On 28 July 1896, Thomas Edison live photography session was held in the Concerts Hall of the Botanical Garden of Vilnius University. After a year, similar American movies were available with the addition of special phonograph records that also provided sound. In 1909, Lithuanian cinema pioneers Antanas Raciunas and Ladislas Starovich released their first movies. Soon the Rachunas recordings of Lithuania's views became very popular among the Lithuanian Americans abroad. In 1925, Pranas Veluskis filmed movie Noctis Lietuvoje Night in Lithuania about Lithuanian book smugglers that left the first bright Lithuanian footprint in Hollywood. The most significant and mature Lithuanian-American movie of the time Oxo Zasis Golden Goose was created in 1965 by Byrat Pukelevichuda that featured motifs from the Brothers Grimm fairy tales. 
In 1940, Romuva Cinema was opened in Kanas and currently is the oldest still operational movie theatre in Lithuania. After the occupation of the state, movies mostly were used for the Soviet propaganda purposes. Netherless Almontas Grikovicius, Gitis Luxes, Henrikas Sablevichis, Arunas Zabriunas, Raymondas Vabalas were able to overcome the obstacles and create valuable films. After the restoration of the independence, Saronis Bartas, Audrius Stonis, Arunas Matalis, Audrius Juzinas, Algimantis Puipa, Yanina Lipinskaite, Dijana, and her husband Cornelius Matuzovicius received success in international movie festivals. Music <laughs> <laughs> Lithuanian folk music belongs to Baltic music branch which is connected with Neolithic corded ware culture. Two instrument cultures meet in the areas inhabited by Lithuanians, stringed and wind instrument cultures. Lithuanian folk music is archaic, mostly used for ritual purposes, containing elements of paganism faith. There are three ancient styles of singing in Lithuania connected with ethnographical regions, monophony, heterophony and polyphony. Folk song genres, sutartines multi-part songs, wedding songs, war historical time songs, calendar cycle and ritual songs and work songs. Italian artists organized the first opera in Lithuania on 4 September 1636 in the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania by Władysław IV Vesa order. Mykologis Konstantinas Cyrilonis is the most renowned Lithuanian painter and composer. During his short life he created about 200 pieces of music. His works have had profound influence on modern Lithuanian culture. His symphonic poems in the forest and the sea were performed only posthumously. Cyrilonis contributed to symbolism and art nouveau and was representative of the fin de siècle epic. He has been considered one of the pioneers of abstract art in Europe. In Lithuania, choral music is very important. Vilnius is the only city with three choirs laureates Brevis, Jana Muzika and Chamber Choir of the Conservatoire at the European Grand Prix for choral singing. There is a long-standing tradition of the Danu Svente Lithuanian Song and Dance Festival. The first one took place in Kaunas in 1924. Since 1990, the festival has been organized every four years and summons roughly 30,000 singers and folk dancers of various professional levels and age groups from across the country. In 2008, Lithuanian Song and Dance Festival together with its Latvian and Estonian versions was inscribed as UNESCO Masterpiece of the Oral and Intangible Heritage of Humanity. Gatva's Musikos Dina Street Music Day gathers musicians of various genres annually. Operas are staged in Lithuanian National Opera and Ballet Theatre and also by independent troupe Vilnius City Opera. Conductor Murga Grazenite Tyla performing on the scenes of Rome, New York and Birmingham. Modern classical composers emerged in 70s Bronius Kudovicius, Felix's Bajoras, Osvaldas Balakauskas, Anut Narbutite, Vidmantis Bartolis, and others. Most of those composers explored archaic Lithuanian music and its harmonic combination with modern minimalism and neoromanticism. Jazz scene was active even during the years of Soviet occupation. The real breakthrough would occur in 1970–71 with the coming together of the Gonolin, Tarasov, Chekhasin trio, the alleged instigators of the Vilnius Jazz School. Most known annual events are Vilnius Jazz Festival, Kana's Jazz, Burstona's Jazz. Music Information Center Lithuania MICL collects, promotes and shares information on Lithuanian musical culture.
Topic: <laughs> Rock and protest music. After the Soviet reoccupation of Lithuania in 1944, the Soviets' censorship continued firmly controlling all artistic expressions in Lithuania, and any violations by criticizing the regime would immediately result in punishments. The first local rock bands started to emerge around 1965 and included Kurtakai, Aitvarai and Nuogi Ant Slankshio in Kanas, and Kestudis Antonellis, Vianuoliai, and Galiu Vaikai in Vilnius, among others. Unable to express their opinions directly, the Lithuanian artists began organizing patriotic Roko Marseille and were using metaphors in their songs' lyrics, which were easily identified for their true meanings by the locals. Postmodernist rock band Antis and its vocalist Algirdas Kospidas were one of the most active performers who mocked the Soviet regime by using metaphors. For example, in the song Zombie Zombies, the band indirectly sang about the Red Army soldiers who occupied the state and its military base in Ukmerge. Vitatas Kurnagas' song Colorado Vabalai Colorado Beatles was also a favorite, due to its lyrics in which true meaning of the Colorado Beatles was intended to be the Soviets decorated with the ribbons of St. George. In the early independence years, rock band Foyer was particularly popular and gathered tens of thousands of spectators to the concerts. After disbanding in 1997, Foyer vocalist Andrius Mamontovas remained one of the most prominent Lithuanian performers and an active participant in various charity events. Marionas Makutovicis is famous for creating unofficial Lithuania sport anthem Tris Milijonai an official anthem of the Eurobasket 2011 Nebataili Sergaliai English version was named Celebrate Basketball. Cuisine <coughs> 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 Lithuanian cuisine features the products suited to the cool and moist northern climate of Lithuania – barley, potatoes, rye, beets, greens, berries, and mushrooms are locally grown, and dairy products are one of its specialties. Fish dishes are very popular in the coastal region. Since it shares its climate and agricultural practices with Northern Europe, Lithuanian cuisine has some similarities to Scandinavian cuisine. Nevertheless, it has its own distinguishing features, which were formed by a variety of influences during the country's long and difficult history. Dairy products are an important part of traditional Lithuanian cuisine. These include white cottage cheese surus, curd varsky, soured milk rugpinus, sour cream gryotine, butter sviestas, and sour cream butter castinis. Traditional meat products are usually seasoned, matured and smoked, smoked sausages deiros, lard licinii, skilandis, smoked ham compass. Soups sriubos, bolitas soup, cabbage soup, beer soup, milk soup and various kinds of porridges koses, are part of tradition and daily diet. Freshwater fish, herring, wild berries and mushrooms, honey are highly popular diet to this day. One of the oldest and most fundamental Lithuanian food products was and is rye bread. Rye bread is eaten every day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Bread played an important role in family rituals and agrarian ceremonies. Lithuanians and other nations that once formed part of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania share many dishes and beverages. German traditions also influenced Lithuanian cuisine, introducing pork and potato dishes, such as potato pudding or kugel and potato sausages as well as the Baroque tree cake known as sakotis. The most exotic of all the influences is Eastern cuisine, the kibanai are popular in Lithuania. 
Lithuanian noblemen usually hired French chefs, so French cuisine influence came to Lithuania in this way. Balts were using mead for thousands of years. Beer is the most common alcoholic beverage. Lithuania has a long farmhouse beer tradition, first mentioned in 11th century chronicles. Beer was brewed for ancient Baltic festivities and rituals. Farmhouse brewing survived to a greater extent in Lithuania than anywhere else, and through accidents of history the Lithuanians then developed a commercial brewing culture from their unique farmhouse traditions. Lithuania is top five by consumption of beer per capita in Europe in 2015, counting 75 active breweries, 32 of them are microbreweries. The microbrewery scene in Lithuania has been growing in later years, with a number of bars focusing on these beers popping up in Vilnius and also in other parts of the country. Eight Lithuanian restaurants are listed in White Guide Baltic Top 30. Media The Constitution of Lithuania provides for freedom of speech and press, and the government generally respects these rights in practice. An independent press, an effective judiciary, and a functioning democratic political system combine to promote these freedoms. However, the constitutional definition of freedom of expression does not protect certain acts, such as incitement to national, racial, religious, or social hatred, violence and discrimination, or slander, and disinformation. It is a crime to deny or grossly trivialize Soviet or Nazi German crimes against Lithuania or its citizens, or to deny genocide, crimes against humanity, or war crimes. Best selling daily national newspapers in Lithuania are Lietuvos Rytas, about 18, 8% of all daily readers, Vakaro Zinios, 12, 5%, Kauno Dina, 3, 7%, Sholu Krostas, 3, 2%, and Vakaru Expresses, 2, 7%. 7%. Best-selling weekly newspapers are Savite, about 34% of all weekly readers, Zamuans, 17%, Prekavos, 11, 9%, G, 8, 7%, and Express Nadelia, 5, 4%. In July 2018, the most popular national television channels in Lithuania were TV3, about 35, 9% of the auditorium, LNK, 32, 8 percent Lithuanian National Radio and Television 36% BTV 19 9% Lietuvos Rytas TV 19 1% The most popular radio stations in Lithuania are M1 about 15 8% of all listeners Laitis 12 2% LRT Radios 10 5% and Radio Centras 10 5% Topic: Public holidays and festivals. As a result of a thousand years' history, Lithuania has two national days. First one is the Statehood Day on the 6th of July, marking the establishment of the medieval kingdom of Lithuania by Mindaugas in 1253. Creation of modern Lithuanian state is commemorated on 16 February as a Lithuanian state re-establishment day on which declaration of independence from Russia and Germany was declared in 1918. Jonines previously known as Rossos, is a public holiday with Paganic roots that celebrates a solstice. As of 2018, there are 13 public holidays, which come with a day off. Kazuko Moog is an annual fair held since the beginning of the 17th century that commemorates the anniversary of Saint Casimir's death and gathers thousands of visitors and many craftsmen. 
Other notable festivals are Vilnius International Film Festival, Kauno Miesto Dina, Klepeda Sea Festival, Mados Infektsia, Vilnius Book Fair, Vilnius Marathon, Devilstone Open Air, Apuole 854, Great Zamaichu Calvaria Festival. Sports Basketball is the most popular and national sport of Lithuania. The Lithuania national basketball team has had significant success in international basketball events, having won the Eurobasket on three occasions 1937, 1939 and 2003, as well a total of eight other medals in the Eurobasket, the World Championships and the Olympic Games. The men's national team also has extremely high TV ratings as about 76% of the country's population watched their games live in 2014. Lithuania hosted the Eurobasket in 1939 and 2011. The historic Lithuanian basketball team BC Jalgiris, from Kaunas, won the European Basketball League Euroleague in 1999. Lithuania has produced a number of NBA players, including Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame inductees Arvidas Sabonis and Saronis Marshalonis, and current NBA players Jonas Valenciunas and Demontis Sabonis. Lithuania has won a total of 25 medals at the Olympic Games, including six gold medals in athletics, modern pentathlon, shooting, and swimming. Numerous other Lithuanians won Olympic medals representing Soviet Union. Discus thrower Virgilius Alegna is the most successful Olympic athlete of independent Lithuania, having won gold medals in the 2000 Sydney and 2004 Athens Games, as well as a bronze in 2008 Beijing Olympics and numerous World Championship medals. More recently, the gold medal won by a then 15-year-old swimmer Ruta Malatite at the 2012 Summer Olympics in London sparked a rise in popularity for the sport in Lithuania. Lithuania has produced prominent athletes in athletics, modern pentathlon, road and track cycling, chess, rowing, aerobatics, strongman, wrestling, boxing, mixed martial arts, kyokushin karate and other sports. Few Lithuanian athletes have found success in winter sports, although facilities are provided by several ice rinks and skiing slopes, including Snow Arena, the first indoor ski slope in the Baltics. In 2018 Lithuania national ice hockey team won gold medals at the 2018 IIHF World Championship Division 1 A Lithuanian ethnic sport, known since the 17th century as Ritonis. Lithuanians annually participates in the Dakar Rally. Antanas Junevicius and Benedictas Vinagas are well known internationally. Topic: International rankings. The following are links to international rankings of Lithuania from selected research institutes and foundations, including economic output and various composite indices. Topic: See also. Index of Lithuania-related articles List of Lithuanians Outline of Lithuania Notes Carat Various sources classify Lithuania differently for statistical and other purposes. For example, United Nations and Eurovic, among others, classify it as Northern Europe, the CIA World Factbook classifies it as Eastern Europe, and Encyclopædia Britannica locates it in Northeastern Europe. Usage varies greatly, and controversially, in press sources. <laughs> <laughs>